Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Dimitri Kirin, Director of Development for National Geographic. This is my co compadre, um, Matthew Ovington. He's Director of uh, Strategic Partnerships. And here we have uh, developers from Australia, company Minimega, and they will uh, tell us a little bit more uh, how it works, how, how it is to work with National Geographic. So the uh, one thing I would like to apologize in advance, we are presenting a s uh, slightly reduced numbers. Um, one of the companies that were uh, to about I mean, was going to join us today, unfortunately, couldn't make it from uh, uh, Latvia, and um, so we'll, we'll, I will be covering for them as, as a developer's perspective for the <laughs> for, for as far as uh, working for the National Geographic. So uh, the theme, of, uh, the topic for today's presentation is gamifying an, a non-profit uh, brand. National Geographic is one of the uh, oldest. Uh, brand in the United States, one of the oldest brand in um, in the world. Um, so, over the uh, Na National Geographic Games um, opened its doors in 2008, and the initial business model behind our activities was uh, the one that you guys are familiar with: is essentially work f finding partners, is work for hire, and um, uh, developing games, publishing games, uh, designing games internally, in-house as, as essentially a development studio, just branded as, as not Geo Games. And uh, we, we, we've done it all. We were in uh, uh, Xbox 360 development. Uh, the game up top is the one that we uh, co-developed with Microsoft, uh, not Geo King TV, Connect TV. Um, obviously, we had to enter the uh, uh, hidden object uh, space with uh, um, uh, with Big Fish, and we released several titles on, 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 on Big Fish games. Quite successful. One of them was the one we released in 2008, uh, Herod's Lost Doom. Uh, we also developed ser several games for the DS, um, and our, one of our latest games was developed with. Um, um, uh, National Geographic Channel as a as an asset for one of the most successful shows uh, that uh, Nat Geo Channel released in the year 2012, um, Doomsday Preppers. So we we decided we were we were completely platform agnostic. We were trying all sorts of opportunities on different platforms, and. Um, so my next slide is where I kick in as, as Wise Games, uh, com the company that unfortunately couldn't make it here. Um, in 2012, National Geographic, in conjunction with General Electric and uh, Science Center, American Science Centers, we released um, we released a, a, a city builder game called uh, Planet Green Live. Um, it's essentially a, a a clone of, of SimCity with a, a green spin uh, to it. So it's essentially an eco-builder. Um, we, as I said, we launched this game in 2011. Uh, the soft launch was in 2012. And um, we, we did a hard launch in, in 2013, in, in March of 2013. Um, there, since it was a kid's I, uh, IP, we had to go through several iteration of um, uh, obviously internal approvals, and it's just it wasn't really too easy to overcome the couple compliance issues. So to make this game viral and, and social, we had to invent and develop our internal um, uh, Facebook light kind of uh, platform that works obviously only inter internally uh, as a part of the Planet Green Life uh, game. Um, so, as a developer, uh, we were not our developers were f facing with mm, several challenges, um, such as obviously high quality expectations, both from the National Geographic and from the General Electric. Um, the d developer who work with a non-profit bra brand, uh, such as National Geographic, has to go through multiple stages of approval, uh, content approval, and then. And of course, we have a different approach to the workflow because not necessarily all the parties involved on our side understand the uh, the milestone structure and uh, um, uh, you know code logs and stuff like that. So it was it was definitely challenging for a milestone-driven uh, development studio to to understand why all of a sudden we decided to change the course of action and and and, and put some extra mini games or take some mini games out of the game. Um, which uh, obviously was quite a frustrating 
frustrating experience for them. Um, another thing that developer, ha any developer that decides to work with a nonprofit brand has to be aware of that on our side, and especially on, uh, on the third party um, side, such as GE, uh, there is not that much of a gaming expertise, so they kind of feel that they know what they're talking about, but not necessarily. So it's also on developer side to educate uh, us as a non-profit pro uh, uh, partner to understand the gaming industry better. Um, and I think the most challenging uh, obstacle for, for the developer was the fact that uh, there was no revenue share involved because the game was entirely non-profit. So all the, uh, all the budget that we had at the beginning had to be uh, managed wisely to the end and, and there was no way for them to, to earn extra money uh, as far as the revenue share is concerned. Um, but these, as I said, these were just you know, cons, but maybe not so much cons, but uh, um, difficulties, so to say, working with National Geographic. As far as benefits are concerned, uh, with benefits of working with big brands, and especially with National Geographic, is that we, uh, we are very flexible. We have, we, we, when we see the good idea, when we hear, hear about a good uh, design um, a twist, we would definitely, uh, we will be open for any, any, any discussion. Um, our flexibil flexibility with deadline is also quite, uh, quite substantial, it's because, substantial because we don't really uh, enforce our milestones on our developers. So developers do have a, f a flexibility of working on their own pace. Um, by the association, it's, it's important to have and we think it's important to have our brand on one's portfolio because a, it does, does look great on portfolio, but it also um, uh, have a, a chance to become a potential asset for, for a company who decides to you know, be acquired or, 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 or gets seeking the company who seeks for external investment. So all things considered, we are pretty proud of, of, of this product. We have uh, uh, over 100,000 registered accounts. The play time on site is over 15 minutes, and all these other KPIs, you know, 15 million times players gathered resources and so on and so forth. Um, very positive out, uh, feedback from the, from the uh, playing community, so all things considered, we are pretty, we're pretty we're happy with, this, with the success of this game. Um, that was the past. Uh, national, uh, in 2013, National Geographic switched into a, a licensing model, so we actually don't really invest in game production anymore. And Matt will 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 tell about, uh, about more a little bit, a little bit. Um, but um, we've just decided that it's not really compelling business model for us to stay in game production. And as of November 2013, we moved into a licensing model. Thank you, Dimitri. As far as the, the changing of the guard, um, National Geographic decided to focus on these uh, core content areas of history and travel, adventure and science, the things that, that ring true to our brand and put the development in the hands of the developers instead of um, trying to play proxy or, or continuing in the, in the co-development space. Um, one thing that we're particularly interested in sharing with you today is a, a partnership that we just announced um, with Minimega, um, the Australian company and creators of Bonza Word Puzzle. Um, so I know we're trying to keep our, our session short. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ben and Panya. Hi, uh, my name is Ben. I'm creative director of an uh, indie game development company in Australia called Minimega. Uh, we created a game called Bonza Word Puzzle. Uh, it was released about 12 months ago, and it's been quite successful. It's a, um, a word puzzle game where you join pieces together, uh, kind of like a crossword mixed with a jigsaw puzzle. Um, so it's done pretty well. Um, we started our relationship with National Geographic about 12 months ago. Um, from there, we worked with them as we were growing uh, Bonza Word Puzzle, and we decided that it was a really great idea for us to um, go ahead and partner with them uh, to create a new title called uh, Bonza National Geographic. So uh, Bonza National Geographic um, is the result of a licensing agreement that we have now with National Geographic. Um, and part of the benefits that we get from this licensing agreement is that we have uh, access to the National Geographic brand. 
um, we get to use the brand mark on, uh, within our game and within our marketing collateral. And on top of that, we also have access to uh, the prolific image library that comes with uh, National Geographic. So for us, it's a great benefit. Um, and ex in exchange as well, um, we also hope that uh, we can reach their, their audience and we can bring their audience over to um, distribute within our audience as well. Uh, yeah. Hi, um, my name is Panya. I'm the uh, technical director at Minimega. Um, I thought maybe I'd just talk a little bit about my experience working so far with National Geographic. Um, purely from a logistics and technical perspective, things have been really, really smooth and going over really, really well. Um, our background is actually in advertising. Uh, we started our company doing a whole lot of commission games for large brands. So we, we've had quite a lot of experience working for uh, different brands such as you know, Kleenex and uh, Mini and Woolworths and supermarkets and all these kinds of things. Um, for the most part, working with large companies like this is, you know, it has, it has its ups and downs. Um, from a developer's perspective, from a programmer's perspective, um, often sometimes it can be uh, a little bit difficult um, integrating with their existing systems. Sometimes there's a, a contractual a requirement to say, put everything on their servers, use their databases, integrate with their um, uh, analytics tracking and, and, and things like this. Um, a big surprise to us actually uh, when meeting the guys at National Geographic was that there is very little um, technical overhead in working with them on building a product. They basically give us the freedom to do everything as we normally would. Um, our process, you know, we're basically just two guys from Australia. We're, we're really nimble. We like to um, design as we go and, uh, uh, and, and work in a way that, that's very flexible. And, and they allow us that, that flexibility. Um, you know, specifically, we get to use our own um, uh, Git repository. We, we keep hold of all of our source code. We use our own databases. Um, we really, the only thing that's really different in our process is um, every milestone we give these guys a build and, and they tell us how great it is. Dimitri, would you like to take it? No, I, I think I think the, you just you nailed it in the head. I think it's important for us to uh, to make sure that developers feel comfortable working with us. And although we do have this technical expertise in house that we you know as, as Ponya just mentioned, you know, um, to require certain things, we understand that in this stage it's important for us to make sure that it's more about developers than it is about our internal infrastructures and our internal ways of, of tracking their performance because at the end of the day it's all it, it, the bigger scheme of things it's all about big brand being um, in, exposed in the most positive way and and our assets that are absolutely stunning and not uh, just about to hit the the trailer for for a mini mag and we're very very excited about this opportunity i think it's it's the beginning of, of a new era for for the national geographic games so that's it thank you for your attention Any questions? Hi, my name is Roger from Improvive here in Holland. What direction are you looking for in terms of developers or partners? Because um, I see a word game, but I don't see something that's really National Geographic branded. I, I could see how you could integrate it with your content and your proposition. But what direction do you want to go? Do you want to be the the Disney, but then more in the educational thing? Um, it's it's uh, interesting to see what direction you want to go. Can you comment on that? Uh, I think you should go to the eight. Eight, yeah. I think Matt will take this question. I think playing to National Geographic's core strengths in these themed areas, not just the kids' property, but extending the reach of the brand in um, in animals and nature, adventure and science, um, so not not locking ourselves into uh, a particular genre or particular gameplay or, or mechanic, but exposing the brand across the the life cycle and the variety of um, 
that's app opportunities that are out there. So both in, from a content standpoint as well as from a, a branded um, branded property. Had another question right behind you. Hello, my name is Anfis, and I have a small question. I'm coming from a like sci science um, field, and how do you encourage to play games with a purpose? How do you encourage people to to play your games? Um, I mean, uh, there are so many games available, and. <laughs> As, as far as, I mean, again, being as, as a developer, I don't think that there is any way to encourage someone to play a game if the game is not fun. So it's important for us to, to make sure that the, the game plays well and there is no like, usability issues and it's just a fun game to play. And we see the, uh, the engagement pertinent to causes or, or educational values as a, as a secondary level, a layer to, to the fan factor. So it needs to be fun and, pl and, and a great game first and then all, all other values, we, we kind of adjust to it. So educational purpose is not on the first front? Um, it's important, but, but the it, first we... first is fun. <laughs> fun yeah, it, it, the game, it needs to be engage, engaging first, okay. and, and then educational. Okay, thank you. If you're working entirely on a licensing-based model, how do you leverage the power of the portfolio of National Geographic branded apps? And that would be mad. Um, the question is, how do we leverage the portfolio of yep. apps? Well, it's a challenge in that um, Disney-based and, and others where, we, where there's a, a host of upfront branded, there's no mistaking the, the Disney brand, and the developer takes a, a back seat where our model really supports the, uh, the developer's expertise and whether we've got the bandwidth and exposure within the National Geographic brand through our website and our portal. Um, Do you offer a, a, a common cross-promotional platform or API that the developers put in place? Uh, not at this moment. There, there are definitely plans so, to create our own API that will cross-promote our titles throughout the entire ecosystem. But uh, there w the reason why we actually didn't do it before because we had an ongoing relationship with, plat with uh, publishers um, both on Facebook and on, on App Store. So they were taking care of all the cross promo and, and user acquisition. We didn't really have to deal with this. Um, but more and more we understand that at least we, we can, w the very least we can do for our partners such as Minimega is to help them to promote uh, not geo branded app on our vir viral channels such as Facebook and Twitter and, 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 and other viral channels. Um, I actually had a question. Dylan Collins in a previous talk said that uh, Silicon Valley has discovered kids. National Geographic is a well-established brand historically. How are you going to compete with these new kids on the block? <laughs> yeah. um, again, we, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult, it, it's a great question, and I wish we had an answer. Um, I don't think we do have an answer right now. I think the, the goal is to um, make our portfolio more appealing and bigger portfolio, to build up our portfolio first and, and make sure that you know, all our kids' title actually do cross-promote each other and we have a, uh, a holistic approach as far as who publishes. us. Well, maybe ideally, uh, initially we should go with external publisher and see how things are, uh, are going to look like in, in a year or so. And then maybe National Geographic will become a, a kids publishing entity. We just, we don't know yet. It's, it's a great question. As I said, I wish I had an answer. <laughs> Clark will help us definitely. Um, are there any more questions for the National Geographic panel or Mini Mega on working with such a large brand? Okay, well, in that case, I'd like to thank Dimitri and the panel. Thanks so much for coming up and giving us your talk.